Too many people are throwing garbage in their blue bins. Toronto, Edmonton and Halifax have the dirtiest recycling. But it's a problem right across the country. And taxpayers have a choice. Clean it up or pay for it. Every percentage point that we can bring that down, we can save the city between $600,000 and $1 million a year. And that correlates right back into the rates that we charge for waste collection. So the more we can bring that contamination down, the less we have to charge for those services. So the push is on to educate people and manufacturers about what can and cannot be recycled. Christine Birak sorts through some of the most common contaminants. Every day, Canadians are playing recycling roulette. Ribbons, light bulbs, clothing, coffee cups. Which bin do you put it in? Oh, I've landed on toothbrush and paste. I really don't know, seriously. The answer is garbage. But if you toss it into recycling thinking, who knows? It could end up here. So you're on the tipping floor of the largest material recovery facility in Canada. If you can picture it, 800 America. swimming pools full of loose materials arrive here every day to be sorted and hopefully go on to a new life. What can't be recycled is called a contaminant. There's a variety of materials that are valuable that are here, and then there's a variety of materials that are a problem. One of, one of, <laughs> is that a problem? <laughs> unfortunately, sad monkey is a problem. That's a contaminant. I see a pair of jeans, I see a backpack here. Things that just shouldn't be in a blue box. Neither should unwashed jars of peanut butter, propane cylinders, syringes, or black plastic containers. Roughly a quarter of what comes in can't move through here. It can damage equipment, it can cause safety problems for the people that work here. It can contaminate the very valuable materials that come through a facility like this. And we have to do something about that contamination. Paper towels, candy wrappers, black lid. You know, there's really only one thing in that bag. Oh, and a dead mouse. Look at that. So that's obviously not recycling a dead mouse in a mouse trap. And that's costing every resident in the city money right now. Oh my God. Sorting and processing misplaced garbage is costing Toronto residents more than $9 million a year. Dead animals aside, what goes into your blue bin has become complicated by mixed plastics and mixed messaging. And there's a complete disconnect between what a municipality will accept and what manufacturers and retailers are putting into the market and saying is recyclable. And I think it's causing frustration. Did you get a calendar? Yes, I did. Toronto is offering recycling ambassadors to answer questions. One of the most common mistakes, throwing dark garbage bags into recycling bins. At this building, they did something about it. Yes, we have. And one of the things that we've added um, to our bins, just as another last minute reminder to people, is we've, we've created these signs, garbage only, no recycling, no organics on the sign. Recycling only, no dark garbage bags, no organics. I'm confused about light bulbs. When in doubt, go online. Cities offer quick sorting tools. They know recycling can be a tricky, expensive game. Christine Birak, CBC News, Toronto. It is worth noting two cities stand above the rest when it comes to clean recycling in Canada. St. John's has a contamination rate of just 3%, and here in Vancouver it's just 4.6%. That's in part because residents have to sort their recycling, so cardboard containers and paper all go in separate bags or bins. There are also certain items like plastic grocery bags that the cities either won't accept or require to be dropped off at designated depots.